What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's review and breakdown of Secret Invasion. It's finale time, baby. I'm Tim Geddes and I'm joined today for the first time on this show by my favorite people in the world, the Star Wars crew, Sage Ryan and Anthony Carboni. What's up? I'm a scroll. Yeah, I'm one of Tim's favorite people. You are. I, do, doing content with you guys is always fun. And I feel like I've been missing out so much because like Barrett said this before we went live. It feels like Mandalorian season three was like three years ago. And it wasn't. Easily. But it's just how times work in these days, you know? Yeah. You've watched a lot of shows between then and now. Yeah, that's true. A lot of movies, a lot of stuff going on. Sage, we haven't even talked about Barbie. What, what, are, what are the thoughts on Barbie? I think it's the greatest movie ever made. I've already seen it twice in theaters. How many times have you seen Oppenheimer? Zero. Zero. Okay. <laughs> I did not. I did not oh. Barbenheimer. I simply don't care about the bomb. You Barbie, yeah. Barbie. I like that. I'm, yeah, I'm Barbie Barbie's, all the way down. Barbie's a great movie. I think Barbie might almost. Barbie's like a perfect film. And Oppenheimer. <laughs> I like Oppenheimer. Listen, if you're gonna shoot one of those movies in seventy millimeter, I wish it had been Barbie. Did you watch both? No. <laughs> did you watch just Barbie? Yeah. yeah, I just watched Barbie. Listen, you, yeah, listen, you're, you're gonna shoot a you're gonna shoot a biopic about the guy who worked on the Manhattan Project in 70 millimeter. Why? Here's what I'll say. We also we did Barbie That's week your all week. Popcorn movie. Why? <laughs> we did Barbie week all week uh, on on Pixel Circus. Uh, so in total, I realized that I put together seven Barbie outfits last week. You're amazing. Uh, for screenings of it, for our tabletop RPG one shot, uh, for our three episodes of It's Too Early that were Barbie mm -hmm. themed. We went hard. I love that. Be, be honest with us, Tim. Have we just lost half the audience? No. No, no. We are, I mean, we got a funny hour straight up Barbenheim, Barbenheimer fan. Well, we are, we are I'll yeah. see it. I'll see it. Yeah. But we're Let's here to talk it. about scrolls. We are here yeah. to talk about scrolls. We're here to talk about anyone secret. Anyone can be a scroll. It, anyone can be a scroll. Anyone can wear as the mask. As anyone as can cook. As, as long as it's clearly pointed out with, the you know, first for, for like five, ten minutes beforehand that they're a scroll. Yes. Anyone can be a scroll. Exactly. Anyone can be a scroll. Um, so. I, uh, well, of course, this is the Kind of Funny screencast. Every week we do the breakdowns. You can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny. Podcast services around the globe. Just search for Kind of a Screencast and we'll be right there for you. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to get the show ad free, just like James Hastings, Casey Andrew, and Nathan Lamoth, our Patreon producers, have done. Today we're brought to you by Honey, BetterHelp, and Shady Rays, but I'll tell you about that later. The finale, episode six of Secret Invasion. Uh, the, I want to say sixth, Disney Plus MCU show, something like that. Um, not including the the special one-off things, just the shows. Sure. Um, I haven't talked to you guys too much about your thoughts on the show overall. So I want to get your thoughts on the whole series thus far and then the finale in particular. Sage, kick us off. Okay, so for those who have heard me talk, uh, uh, for when we did uh, the prequels, actually, those might remember, I'm a Samuel L. Jackson hater. <laughs> Which is why it's so funny that you invited me to do this show on the finale. I am not a Samuel L. Jackson fan. In fact, if Samuel L. Jackson has no haters, I am dead. Damn. <laughs> Uh, it is me. I am a downright Samuel L. Jackson hater. He's the same in every role, which I get. So if you like that character that Samuel L. Jackson is, you're going to love Samuel L. Jackson projects. If you don't, you won't. But I am a Marvel fan. So I show up for Secret Invasion. And overall, uh, the show has not had a lot to it for me. Uh, again, we run into these problems with these short Disney Plus series where it feels like you're building up to something you're never going to get to in six episodes. So either you have to put out a show that is like incredibly high intensity, fast paced, where you almost can't keep up because you have enough you, you to give it enough to make a season. Or you end up in this where you're like, yeah, no, we're getting there. We'll be there. Don't you worry. You just keep watching. And I swear, one of these days, we're getting there. Uh, in general, the like government side of Marvel, I think, is uh, a, a common miss. I don't think that the government, like the, the government aspects, when you get into S.H.I.E.L.D. and all of these things. The military industrial the, stuff. The, yeah, when you get into the military industrial complex of Marvel, it isn't usually very good. And I think that I wanted this show to be an exception. I'm like, all right, you're giving it a whole show, though. Like, you might have time to develop something that is kind of background in a lot of movies. And I don't feel like they did. I don't feel mm -hmm. like they gave us anything new. Yeah, yeah. Did the finale do anything positive or negative for you? Uh, I would say that 
ended in a place that I felt like satisfied with. I don't think it was a bad ending to a series. Um, I just don't think it was super climactic of an ending. Uh, I think it was a satisfying ending, though, for what it was. Cabody, before we get to you, uh, Barrett says that there are nine MCU shows, which sounds, no. oh, yeah. sounds like too you want me to listen because because I was are going you including through like Werewolf by Night. No, stuff, no, I'm not Go including on. the one off thing. So don't, starting don't, from don't read it off. Don't read okay. it off. Uh, let, okay, let's, let's see if we can do it. Let's okay. see if we can do it. Yeah, it's it's Wanda Division, Falcon mm-hmm. and Winter Soldier, Falcon and Winter mm-hmm. Soldier, Hawkeye, Loki, Loki. Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, She Hulk. She Hulk, oh damn! And then here we go, Secret Invasion number nine. Well, that's number that's eight. eight. That's eight. What that's are we eight. missing? We're missing one. What's the one what we, we forgot? Miss? Barrett, what did we miss? What if? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What if? Oh, oh animated though. Yeah, animated yeah. Though, yeah I wouldn't right. have counted what if, but it makes. It sense. does count though. It it does yeah, count. no, like you're right, but I I'm see not, listen, why that I'm was I'm not less trying to. With. Yeah, I'm not trying to like. I know. You, I get it, Carboni. You hate animated about. things. You know, you hate oh, there's animated nothing products. I hate more than cartoons. Yeah. If I see a cartoon on the street, oh, <laughs> I'll hit him with an anvil. <laughs> um, so, so Carboni, what do you think of the ninth image. MCU show on Disney Plus? Ooh, lucky number nine. Here's what I'll tell you. Uh. Much like Sage, the the military government side of the Marvel Universe is less interesting to me than the the bigger kind of like superhero personal story side. But I don't I don't think I mind it as much. This was the way they promoted this show and the way it is in the comics. And I know I have to judge the show for what it is, but I can certainly judge it by what they promoted it as they promoted it as a tense spy thriller. They said, who can you trust on every character poster? Like we were going to be getting twist on twist on twist on twist. Mystery Uh, intrigue. And I just think, I think you get more reveals in a two hour mission impossible than you got in six hours of secret invasion, which to me is a little disappointing. I think there's been a lot of lovely character moments. This cast is stacked. Olivia Mm -hmm. Coleman Mm. owns uh, you know, Sam, Samuel L. Jackson, of course, if you're not Sage, owns. <laughs> uh, and the moments with him and his wa- him and his wife, the one thing that I didn't see coming was the wife, was him being married to a Skrull and caring about this Skrull. And it has a lot of beautiful things to say about uh, immigration, uh, about uh, refugees, about being married to somebody who has PTSD, about all of these things. Um and those moments are really, really good. I just feel like the overall intrigue of the plot did not matter as much and did not surprise me as much. And, and mm-hmm. my big theory on this, and you can tell me if you all agree, if this had happened leading up to Endgame, we need everybody to be together and be on the same page. We need to know who we can trust as we're going to fight Thanos. Not only that, but we need to know that all the Avengers that we already know and love and have known for 10 years are actually Avengers. That's very interesting. And that's why Secret Invasion is interesting in the comics is literally Mm -hmm. you don't know who's going to be a Skrull. Yeah. Here it's like, well, there are only three, four people left that we know. And we know who's going to be a Skrull. When Mm -hmm. Rhodey showed up and was like, I'm Rhodey and I'm a Skrull. I'm like, well, of course you are. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you are. Because we know Samuel L. Jackson can't be. You know, we know Maria Hill is dead. So who's the Skrull? It's got to be you, bud. You're the only one left. (laughs) so i think we kind of lost out on some of that there wasn't a lot of that suspense and intrigue that i expected from the series but Mm -hmm. i think overall as like a character piece for nick fury and as some of these other characters it was it was a lot of fun i'm just not very i'm not as invested that's all this was he's he's walter white in this it it was giving the opening of this episode was giving breaking bad so hard as he like ventures down the alley calling his wife yeah just Nick Fury's Walter White story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a weird show for me because like I, I there's been ups, there's been downs. In the beginning, it wasn't perfect, but I did appreciate mm-hmm. the first couple episodes ending on a cliffhanger that would be resolved the next episode. And it kind of felt like there was a momentum going that we were building. I feel like by the time we got to it, I want to say the end of episode three, um, maybe it was episode four, where we get the Amelia Clark Gaia fake out death thing. I was like, all right, well, we've seen this already in this show twice. Like this feels a little bit like the, the, 
the failures of this, like to your point, Carboni, of how they promoted the show, the failures of this being a like paranoid spy thriller, I think started to really uh, be apparent around that point where it's like, oh man, like you already told us everything. I feel like us as an audience never felt like we were um, behind the characters. I feel like we were ahead of the characters, which is not where you want to yes. be in a spy thriller. And you, on you top of that- You only want to be figuring it out 30 seconds before they reveal it to you. Or even way before that. And I, I understand yeah. that we are to no, some No, I'm extent, saying that's what you want out of a spy oh, thriller. It's the, like, oh. you want to feel smart, but you don't want to feel too smart. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I feel like part of this is we are professional TV theorists. We're watching every episode. We know the comics. We're like trying to piece things. Yeah. We're, we're trying to outsmart the, the, mm -hmm. the media. But I feel like this, for how it's presented, you needed a couple like bigger swings with like actual mm -hmm. follow through of us being wowed by it. Whereas this kind of felt more like, yeah, the convenient thing is what happened. And I think that's really backed up, unfortunately, by the Fury side of this, where getting a Nick Fury, I am the opposite of Sage, SLJ forever. Um, and oh, I was excited to get a, a, essentially a Fury show. I knew it wasn't going to be like the comics uh, in terms of everyone's here and like anyone could be a scroll. And like, I knew it was going to be a, a smaller personal story. But I feel like at the end of the day here, we got to know Fury um, and his backstory, his real life a, a lot more, which I loved. Anytime it was just yeah. two characters having a conversation in any of these episodes, I was in. I thought it was well yeah. written. I thought that it really expanded this world, made it feel more real and character driven as opposed to just lore driven, where it's like mm -hmm. Fury having a wife wasn't just like some big Marvel reveal. It really, to Carboni's point and, and Sage a little bit as well, like it allowed the, the characters to deal with things like um, being afraid of others, you know, xenophobia yeah. and, and and just the PTSD and all of that. So mm -hmm. it allowed the show to, to actually get some really good touching deep places. But it reminds me a lot of Falcon and the Winter Soldier overall, where the show tried to do a lot of things. And the way the Falcon and Winter Soldier touched on race, I thought was expertly crafted. It was also yeah. surrounded by a lot of stuff that didn't back that up and it kind of like got yeah. in the way of it. And I feel here that's the case too, where we have a story of a character we've been with for over a decade at this point that is so important to this world and like is the glue between everything. And we haven't seen him for a while and it starts off in the whole story we're being told is Nick Fury has lost his step. He doesn't still mm -hmm. have it. But then the show keeps trying to tell us, but he does still have it. He does still <laughs> have it. And I feel like with the premise of the show, Fury either had to be a scroll at some point, and that would make sense yes. here, there, whatever, or there needed to be a, a reveal of like, motherfuckers, I've had it the whole time, yo. Yeah. And yes. those things didn't happen. So it feels a little bit weird. Having said well, all even that. Even at the end of this one, yeah. even at the end of this one, I was like, President Scroll, one, two, three, President Scroll, one, two, three, President Scroll. And they didn't even they didn't even pull that. There was no like big pull at the end where it's like. It was all part of somebody's plan. You know what I mean? It wasn't part of anybody's plan. That would have made that like last bit so interesting in the presidential address that became so like violent and divisive if that mm -hmm. had been like, oh no, this is like a planned thing still by this like faction of rebel scrolls to continue mm -hmm. the like divisiveness and give them an excuse to like kill civilians, essentially. Yeah. Like oh, there's somebody out there that's Earth bigger civilians. than Gravis. Yeah. That we didn't uh, even know about. That would have been a very like interesting reveal. See, my thing is not a very interesting reveal. I, I think that this is the best episode of the show, the finale. Okay. I don't think yes. it's perfect by far. I agree. And I, I wish that how we got here added up a little bit better because like uh, Gaia's character in particular, I thought was like, like, I liked her in this one, but I didn't, I don't believe that the character we have here is the same one that we've had before. Um, but really when it comes to the, this episode was the only episode that had reveals that made me go, Oh shit. Because yeah. throughout this episode, there was no less than three separate things that made me literally out loud question to Gia. Are, why the fuck would Nick Fury walk into this radiated place, coughing his ass off and like to, to do this final one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I was like, there's going to be some twist. I was like, but I can't think of a single thing I'll feel satisfied with. And then later the, um, it was like they're 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 doing the two scenes of action where it's like it's Fury and Gravik, and then it's them in the yeah. hospital with the president, mm -hmm. and some bullets just are randomly shooting. You're like, who is it? Who could be shooting? And I was like, it's gonna be Olivia Coleman, and that's not satisfying at all. But then when they reveal, oh, it's actually Fury as well. I'm like, I like yeah. that. That's good. And then the president's speech at the end, I'm like, 
This is a violent ass speech. I can't believe this is actually happening. I hope he's not a scroll. I hope that right. this is actually the president. And then when it was, and then Fury calls him out like, bro, what the fuck? You are inciting violence. This is not good. To me, those three things, I'm like, this puts a very interesting uh, bow on the series to be like where the MCU is. Will they take it anywhere interesting? I'm not convinced. <laughs> but yeah. seeing the, the, the shots of like after the post uh, world of the president saying this shit and people shooting each other and all that that is terrifying and real and like that is that the wild. world war three that is even worse oh. than the war that was the original plan and the, the awful thing the thing surprised. that really yeah the thing that like really bugged me out about that scene is we see the british prime minister who we know has been has been a scroll and then has been replaced with the real prime minister again so everything's fine and it's like and when free is like yeah they're just they're just kind of killing anybody that they heard could be a scroll and you like you see her die. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, but that also makes me say, I want more from the uh, from the is I, I think I believe she's she's either Indian or Pakistani, but the member of the scroll uh, uh, the scroll secret uh, secret council. Who oh, at the end yeah. you see her being attacked, and she's just like, nope, not in my office. That was like, badass. That was a cool, <laughs> cool scene. There are yeah. scenes like that in this show that make me go yeah i do still love marvel and like you can still get me and it makes some of the other things feel worse because i'm like yep. come on guys it's mm -hmm. not hard i mm -hmm. do love marvel it is not hard to excite me and well, even in the moments where like you have gaia who is like she does something and i'm like oh mantis ah, oh okay that those are the things that make me go ah shit i do still love marvel so much when it's like oh that's a captain marvel power oh that's mantis that i'm like oh okay that does mean the rest of this was pretty bad if it didn't have me doing like the smallest, give me, give me breadcrumbs. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm back in. I love Marvel. But those scenes in it of the ending of it, I want to see them take that and go like, hey, how often in Marvel have we made, made aliens the bad guys? How, how can we explore that like there is a faction of humans in the same way there are all these factions of aliens that want to kill us that like the second the second that guy went on tv and was like it's fine people immediately and that's exactly like it's so realistic in how quickly that like incited so much violence mm -hmm. that like hey marvel go there let's see what's up dude fury's line of it's easier to save the lives of eight billion than to change their hearts and minds it's like yeah. yeah, Sage, I love this. Yeah. I love where we're at. It's just, we've seen before setups from shows or movies that just aren't followed up on. And, well, and, that and the thing that I'm worried me. about, yeah, the thing that I'm worried about with the setups in particular is we know that by the time we get to Thunderbolts, President Ritson's gone. We know that Harrison Ford is playing President Ross. That was like a big deal that's been in the media about this. So, so you know, uh, when Samuel L. Jackson says, when, when Fury says, that's some real one-term president shit. It's like, yeah, it is. Ritson's going to be gone. And so if Ritson's yeah. going to be gone that soon, like, I wonder what that means in terms of how much of the Skrull stuff is going to continue on through the movies. And we know that Disney and Marvel have already talked about how they feel like maybe they, they overdid this and they spread the audience too thin and they spread the creators too thin. And because of that, I'm wondering how much of this, like, super connectivity we're going to see between this stuff now or if they're going to be pulling back on a lot of this original stuff for disney plus and what that means for connectivity between tv and film going forward yeah it's it's really interesting i want to keep talking about it but real quick let's take a word from our sponsors this episode is brought to you by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you could be done before this ad read is even over. And you know what else works fast? Honey's deal finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you check out, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that and then if it finds a working coupon you will find the prices drop we've saved thousands of dollars thanks to honey buying costumes props tech over the years honestly not using honey is just silly honey doesn't just work on desktop it works on your iphone too just activate it on safari on your phone and you get to save on the go getting honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash 
kind of funny. This episode's brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures just like Mike likes them. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked and every purchase supports the shady rays impact program which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life from childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions exclusively for y'all listening right now shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season go to shadyrays.com and use code kind of funny for 50 percent off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people Again, that's shadyrays.com. Use code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all know life can be hard. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know from experience how often it just seems easier to care about others and keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. For more balance with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash kind of funny betterhelp.com slash kind of funny so here's here's the deal caboni um with that talking about the president thing one thing that i'm really happy about actually with Mm -hmm. um this finale is for the last six weeks i've been doing the show talking to different guests theorizing what's going to happen and there's been a Mm -hmm. couple theories i've had that i've stuck by that i thought were if not locks pretty safe bets some of them being Mm -hmm. we're going to see uh uh, Alexa or Valentina De Fontaine, uh, Julia yep. Louis Dreyfus character in some way. Yeah. Is she a scroll? Is she connected to them? Her being on this more governmenty level, I feel like it would just make sense. Not seeing her, I'm not mad at. Like I feel like they mm-hmm. made a story that made sense without her, and I'm kind of like actually happy that this happened without the obvious thing. But more than yeah. that, I thought it was a surefire bet that the president was going to die in this because we knew about Harrison Ford. I thought we weren't going to get a Harrison Ford cameo, but I did think we were going to get a name drop or some like post-credit scene of like the president's dead. Next up to be president is Thunderbolt Ross and you see Harrison's face or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other thing was I was convinced that Soren, the wife of Talos, was actually grabbing. Like that, that she was still alive and that she was behind the scenes. And I'm a little shocked that's the one thing that i'm disappointed in is that she was just actually dead and was killed in between everything she's the one scroll besides yeah. talos that we spent time with in the other movies and this show starts with her gone and it just feels like she was only gone to allow amelia clark's character to have a character and it felt weird to me that like yeah she was brought up in every episode and she mm-hmm. the idea of the planting the seeds and how obsessed she was with the plants and and like changing the world to be more like uh the scroll planet and things like that i was like she has to be more involved than she than they're telling us and then she just wasn't <laughs> which is like nope. yeah kind of a letdown to me yeah it was it was a real motivator for talos and for and for uh gaia i think more than anything else like you're saying but it can can a scroll turn into another scroll but i mean or even they even grab other human form. no i know but i'm just like that'd be wild yeah that is like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's wild the other thing i'm gonna say is the the super scroll let's talk about which it. is one of the dumbest looking characters in the history of the marvel universe is the super scroll comics real also guys. the name i also yeah. don't understand we really did new scrollos mm-hmm. and super scroll <laughs> Well, Super Scroll's been around. And I remember as a kid, if you yeah. got the Super Scroll card in the Marvel cards, you're like, "Fuck, I got another Super Scroll." <laughs> like it's just that like, name then too. <laughs> I just love but, how much it sounds like it was written by a kid. Totally, yeah, totally. But I just scroll times infinity. Best. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did their best to make the Super Scroll look cool. They did it to make sense within the uh, continuity of the Marvel Universe, right? We've got extremists. We've got the ghost pod. We've got like all these different things that are that are making all of these things work. And it's taking the, the powers of the other characters. <sighs> it do still look silly. And mm-hmm. now we got a super scroll running around. What are you going to do? That's too much. So here's the I thing. I would love it. Go if the Super it. Scroll looked more like in the comics, uh, which looks like the Green Goblin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the outfit I love this. was missing. <laughs> this worked for me a lot. Like, uh-huh. it's silly as shit. And yeah, it looks dumb. And Barrett, I don't know if you could bring up the picture of, of Gaia get, with uh, Drax's arm. Can we get the guns, arm. please? Can we get the yeah. gun show? Like, look. So I took this on my phone because you can't screenshot Disney+. Plus. Um, but there's a specific problem with this. I'm, I'm going to guess I'm about Amelia Clark size and height, okay? Mm-hmm. So we're going to try and get this framing. Her arm's so short. She do have a little arm. <laughs> Why That's is it thing. a weird? Like, this looks it's like real a... real strong, but real tiny. <laughs> this looks like a Photoshop for a meme. Yeah, totally, <laughs> yeah. totally. I will say, though, in, in, motion, motion, in motion, I thought it was fun. And, like, it's supposed to be kind of weird. And, like, the amount that it was flexing and changing into different things... I'm so down with it. I, I thought that this is one of the only times, especially in a D- uh, Disney Plus Marvel show, where the third act final thing being just a fucking fight between people. I was like, yeah. how the fuck is one of the best ones we got in Secret Invasion? Like, I thought that they did a really good job with it. I don't know how earned some of the things were, but her no. transitioning between the powers, the setup for that of the um, Look at little baby gun. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing that's throwing me off because I haven't watched this. I'm so behind on the show. I've kind of given up, and maybe maybe I'll get to it one day. Yeah. It's not the arm. Her head looks big. Why does her head look big compared the to the rest of the arm looks so small? It's because <laughs> the arm is too small. Yeah, because she's but even she's her torso. T- well, Amelia no, Clark is tiny, but but. If you look at where her other elbow lies on that jacket, <laughs> that's a couple inches lower. <laughs> Why did they do that to her? This is such a she's such a badass in this fight. But in that moment, there was like I was hysterical. I was hyperventilating, laughing when that arm spawned. Yeah. And again, and- I loved the fight too, Tim. I think it was a very satisfying, cool fight. I think there was great action in it. I love the use of the different powers. But this arm is giving SpongeBob anchor arms. Yep. Yes. It's it's just it's too short. It yeah. doesn't make any sense why it's up there. It looks like an incredibly buff baby. Yes, it definitely <laughs> yeah. definitely it looks does. like a buff baby that can dance like a man. Like I, there's so much you can <laughs> pick apart here. I know the CG stuff. I know all the stuff like is always the, one of the easiest things to laugh at with this stuff. I liked how silly it was. I guess that's my thing is like, I liked that they full on committed to, it wasn't just Drax's arm. It changed to abominations. It yeah. changed to Thanos at one point. Like, well, very cool. my question, my question about that though, is like, if I'm, if, when I was trying to count all the things that came up and it's like, we got DNA from the Avengers after the battle, we clean, mm-hmm. we got all this stuff. She's, she's got like, She's got like ebony maw powers at one point. Like she she's doing thing. all of, she's got like all of Badass. Thanos's. I'm just like, that's everybody. So that is the problem. It's like, I think that's that the scene in everybody. this show and the fight between them was great. And it's the type of mm-hmm. like using the Marvel play box uh, in the way that I like of like, yeah, man, when she fucking did the, the Captain Marvel thing to fly them up, I'm like, this is awesome. The way they used all those powers, I feel like satisfied me the hardcore fan but also if you don't if you have just seen the movies you're like oh yeah that's the power from somebody i've seen i don't remember their name yeah. but like yeah. i've seen that ghost power before you just yeah, don't know the fun. name ghost that's just fun antennas, to be clear mantis was amazing like honestly the sleep all that stuff i i was in love with that shit but then yeah there is the question of so now you're telling me that this woman that is pretty poorly developed in this show now is the most powerful creature in the entire MCU because she has the powers of everybody, including Thanos and Captain Marvel. <laughs> right. And they have to we, do the thing that they did with Captain Marvel before they were like, uh, yes. she's not available right now. Well, that, yeah, <laughs> Sorry, that's what she I was, was busy. Say, is we're already coming up with so many excuses for why Carol isn't around. And it's the Superman excuse, right? Of like, mm-hmm. if, I, if I decide that I'm going to save everyone, like I have to go save everyone. And so she's like the 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 thing is she's off in space. She's saving other planets. She's doing other things. But you have this like you have this Justice League Superman problem all throughout Mm -hmm. a lot of this Marvel stuff. You know, they they did their best to make it 
grounded and meaningful that Nick Fury didn't call any of his superhero friends in because it was his problem that he caused and so he had to solve it. Nick Fury has been in an administrative position and the head of a secret service for years of his life. Nick Fury solving something doesn't mean that Nick Fury personally has to solve it. And especially once 2,000 people die, you would think that he would go, okay, those are no longer acceptable losses. Who yep. is in the phone that I can call right now? I mean, it's the totally. same excuse we have to make for why the Eternals don't show up for things. Right. It's like, where are, where are they? Where are they all? And it's, you can, you can ground it. And it made a lot of sense for the logic of the story itself. Like, mm -hmm. this is my problem. I will solve it. I'm a self-made man. And this is how I do things. I'm an honorable person. Uh, but buddy, like if you have a friend that can like come down from space and just like, like just, you, you know, know let throw, people throw die. a couple, throw a couple punches and not kill thousands and thousands of people. That's like a good, but I'm also that's like a willing. good choice to make, you know, I'm willing, I'm willing to go with you and say, Hey, but that's not the story of this. And it's a freaking TV mm -hmm. show and we need yeah. there to be stakes. And if we, uh, let that be the case, if we follow by logic and not the fun fantasy that we play in for Marvel. And like there will never be stakes to anything because then too yes. many people are too powerful. But we have escalated from like the Eternals and Captain Marvel being these incredibly powerful forces to this person's all of those combined. Yeah. And I was like genuinely every time somebody's been like, but why not? But what about this character? What were they doing? I'm always like, whatever. I don't care. Shut up. Yeah. Whatever. Well, they were it, busy. It, I do this whatever they were one. busy. I do whatever they were busy the as one. long as the show is entertaining enough and yes. makes sense within its own logic for me never to think that. There is but still there the opportunity for them to explain were, where Super Scroll goes. Yeah, there, so are there were times during this show when I said, I don't fully believe that nobody else would be called right now, especially mm -hmm. since we did see other people in the Marvel Universe being called when Fury needs help through this, right? He's getting passports from people. He's showing up in different, uh, in different parts of the world. He's doing different things and it's like, you could call in a you could call in a little more help. Yeah. And you're not really giving me enough of this like spy thriller logic that is cohesive through the entire show that doesn't make me think to myself, I just wonder what a superhero is doing right now. Mostly because <laughs> this this only half makes sense and it would be more fun if there was a superhero in it right now. So taking, you know? the, taking this from what they gave us, uh, there wasn't too many superheroes in this. They were just talked about, but we get it. It's a TV show, budget, even though yeah. the budget of this was insane. A whole bunch of different things. We know there's movies coming. That's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm at here. We've now seen a lot of these Disney Plus shows kind of tee up a movie and then weirdly not make the connection correctly. I think WandaVision and um, a Multiverse of Madness is the best example of it, of like- Fumbled. It, it, it was just, it was uh, shaky at best. Like, it feels like it was connected, but also retconny. And I'm like, that shouldn't be the case with these type of things. I yeah. understand pandemic. I understand uh, delays. There's been, there's been a lot of things that we're still just not I understand up, I Sam Raimi just didn't get around to watching WandaVision. Sam Raimi's a busy guy, you know? All that stuff. But then it's like, <laughs> we look at some of the other shows. We still haven't really seen the shows and movies interact in like this beautiful set up punchline type way. Yes. Um, and I feel like with this one, it was kind of interesting. The no post credit scene, no real setup yep. of the Marvels. We know that Fury's going back up to space with his wife. So I guess there mm -hmm. is, here's a character that we may or may not see. Like what's the <laughs> likelihood we do not see uh, Vara in the Marvels? I feel like it's 50, 50, right? That sucks. I feel like you get an offhand line from Nick Fury about how his, his wife is like working really hard to restore Stuff like that, but we don't see her, right? Yeah. I feel like we get one of those things. This is something that we've been promised since Agents of Shield, right? Mm -hmm. These things are good. Agents of Shield, do you remember? Like during its during its uh season one or season two, uh was like when when we had uh, Age of Ultron, there was this big ad campaign that was it's all connected. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And it yeah. was Agents of Shield and Age of Ultron, and it's all connected, and it's gonna make sense, and it's all of these things are together. And you're right. I don't think we've ever really gotten that. Yeah. And it's and I, kind of a bummer. It is. And so the other thing too is like, so now we, with the setup of this show, it's weird where cool fury came down from space, dealt with the stuff is now back up in space. And then the Marvels is going to happen. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. cool. 
it almost yeah, feels everyone's more... just like chill like hey fury fury if you don't like this you just you get back up into space okay i guess i'm not fired i guess nothing changes i yeah. guess i'm still cool guess i'll just go back to space so, so we go back to space, quo, then and this feels like it's setting up captain america 4 in a way that i didn't necessarily expect but also is it <laughs> like, like are we it? going to see amelia clark in that because if not where are we seeing her again and and the, we get her teaming up with coleman in this at the end of it and it's mm -hmm. like Clearly, we're talking about world forces here. So I imagine we'll see them in, um, you'd hope, it's teeing up a storyline for Captain America 4 and Thunderbolts being kind of a one-two punch there. But I just yeah. have no faith that it's going to be addressed at all. I just... Hear me out. What if Amelia Clark just became the queen of showing up in Disney properties, establishing a very interesting character we want to know more about, and then never reappearing? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, what if that Cielo. was just Amelia Kira. Clark? Exactly. What if that Kira, was just Amelia Clark's play Gaia. in this Disney life? Whoa. It's all Captain gonna here. be is just two two syllables, ends and IA. Get her uh -huh. out of here. Get it out of here. <laughs> now, what? You're interested and you want to know more, and she did a pretty good job? Choke. Yeah. Maybe Absolutely she'll be in a comic drowned. one day. <laughs> yeah. We'll write a novelization of a comic of a video game. And you'll see her in there. She gave a fun performance. I also wanted to shout out uh, uh Gravik, that that last monologue that Gravik is giving, holding on to Nick Fury's face. It was good. Ooh. It was good. And it's I good. genuinely, it was really good. And I feel like he he was a little bit robbed because his first big powerful monologue was literally a rehash of Killmonger. Yeah. And they were they were literally in the art gallery and he was giving a Killmonger speech. And I was just like, no, nah, give this guy more. This guy can do so much more. He's so good. Yeah. And then this final scene with him and Fury, I was like, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's good. So I was talking a little bit about the either lack of or the potential setup for the, the future of shows and movies and stuff. I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing for me and the potentially biggest reveal of this episode was not that Rhodey's a scroll. We already knew that. But for yeah. how long he has been a scroll. Because that yeah. is interesting with the retcon context of what that means for the mcu thus far it was revealed here he has been the the roadie we know in the movies has been a scroll since civil war since he was paralyzed from the the waist down because we see him in the exact same hospital gown that he was wearing in civil war so here's Wild. what's crazy all of those scenes of roadie doing physical therapy mm -hmm. all of those scenes of roadie like doing all this stuff watching tony and, stark and, die working with tony well, yeah, and working with Tony Stark where it's like, okay, we're going to put this implant into your body. See if you can walk with it. No, give me bigger one. What do you, I don't, what? Do I, how does this work? How does this work? I want to choose to and, love it. I want to choose to be like, whoa, this is big. Thank you for making me rethink it. I want the, to. But the other thing is like, you're right. The death of Tony Stark to Rhodey is a huge character thing. And more than that, it's a huge movie thing for us. Like yes. yeah. when, when Tony dies, he's not looking at Thor and Captain America. He's looking Ooh. at Rhodey and Pepper Potts. <laughs> like damn. They are the ones with and, and Tom Holland gets his moment. But like yeah. It's that's wild to me and it what bothers his me and wife, again, I'm with his you husband, Sage. His son. I want to like it. I, I want to be here yeah. for this and I want yeah. to support it. And I the, we can't complain about like, oh man, the reveals weren't there or whatever. And when they do and we're like, well, that doesn't work because if they did it for any other hero, we'd say the same thing. My problem yeah. is though that the roadie that we've now known and now is confirmed that from Civil War mm -hmm. on was a scroll is so different than the roadie we've seen in this show. And maybe yes. that's because the plan's going into action and now he's like, fuck it, I'm evil. But it's like- Dropping it, yeah. It's just weird that like this is the same roadie that like uh, made the the go back in time and, and, and kill Thanos uh, when he was a baby, like joke, <laughs> but not joke in Endgame. Yeah. That right. roadie- and this roadie, roadie just don't feel no, the same. This guy is this guy is playing a scroll from the beginning in this show. And yeah. you're right, we didn't get that. We didn't Which get makes and, it and, clear they didn't tell Don Cheadle. <laughs> or they didn't know who was gonna be, or they didn't even know who was gonna That's be. That's what a I scroll. mean. It's yeah. like if they didn't know, so he couldn't know when he was playing it. Mm -hmm. But even I mean he's that's a great a actor. He's oh, a yeah. great actor. But could it also just be like I mean, the other thing is Rhodey doesn't get enough 
time in these movies. Like we know that they're like, there's yeah. not enough roadie. So it's like, what we're seeing is we're seeing moments of him. And I guess I can say to myself, we're only seeing moments of him. Uh, and if we saw more of him, maybe it would come through more. So I, I'm yeah. willing to let that go a little bit, but you're right as a big reveal. And the other thing about it being a big reveal is the way they sort of like throw it out there very mm -hmm. plain as day to the point where I think somebody who is a little confused about the continuity now that there are nine shows and 40 movies might not know what was just revealed to them. So here's the thing for me, and this is me just being stupidly hopeful. Yeah, let's go. Armor Wars went mm -hmm. from a show to a movie. Right. Rose yeah. is getting a movie. I think that this reveal, if they play it right, could be so damn interesting of not only having Rhodey have to deal with the fallout of Stark being dead and armor being all around the world and uh. the, the problem of armor wars, but also dealing with the reality that on top of there being an entire blip that he missed, he was un, in the scroll place for five right. fucking years, not dealing with that. In addition to learning that and having to uh, rectify that with his life, he also has been held hostage and someone's been pretending to be him for years as well. That is so damn interesting. And they could yeah. do something so cool and special with it. I just don't think they're going to. <laughs> I hope, I hope maybe, they do. Maybe you make us remourn Tony Stark. That, exactly. I, I mean, that's the thing is even, even Cap is gone. So even the person who would, I mean, the original Cap is gone. So yeah. even the person who would be able to sympathize the most with what, what's happening to Rhodey right now is not there. Mm -mm. you know the person who's like oh yeah man i know what it's like to disappear for a yeah. really long time and come back and all your friends are gone it's like because even the people with the blip when you got put back after the blip a lot of your friends were still there like things changed but yeah like you know you saw like people were coming back to their families to their homes to their work whatever this is just literally nah dude all your friends are dead and gone yeah yeah they're just yeah, dead and wild. gone. And they could uh -oh. do something so cool with that. So, so well thought out and like make us be like, man, this, the MCU is back. But the balancing oh. act is doing it in a way that explains it in the movie for people who don't want to go and watch all this Disney 100%. Plus stuff, yeah. but still make it compelling enough and not spend too much time backtracking for people who have already seen this. Yep. And yeah. that's something that makes these connections very, very hard for Marvel. That's one of the totally. things that we've seen over and over again. So I'm going to wrap up here. Um, it's been great talking to y'all again. Remember everybody, we will be doing a secret invasion MCU in review, uh, with the normal crew of me, Andy, Greg, and Nick, uh, we will rank it, review it and recap it against all the other MCU projects, which is getting unwieldy day by day. Um, and this year, this year alone, we still have like three more things. We have captain, uh, the Marvels, Loki season two and echo, um, all happening. So we'll be doing all of those things. Sage. Thank you for joining us. Where can people find you? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage or over on Pixel Circus, where I host a show called It's Too Early with Anthony. Hell yeah. Carboni, where can people find you? Over on that thing that she just said, and then everywhere at A Carboni. And also just, just going through my closet to see if I saved any of those Super Scroll cards. <laughs> they might be worth something. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I love it. Let <laughs> us know in the comments below what you thought of the finale of Secret Invasion. And until next time, have a marvelous day.